Hello Outrider Squad, Plato here, and today we're going to be going over three things you should probably do to get ready for World Slayer. So let's get started. Number one on this list is to get your characters that you want to play to max character level, which is 30, as well as max gear level, which is 50, with the gear you want to use on the class. Remember that if your characters are CT15, they will be Apocalypse 15 when the DLC launches. For example, let's say you don't have a Technomancer, get that bad boy to level 30 and CT15 fully geared so you can start blasting right out of the gate. How do you get your characters fully geared and ready to go? Check out my Tiago video, linked down below, for a swift way to get as many legendaries and its accompanying T3 mods. While World Slayer will allow you to boost a newly created character to level 30, the character will still have no gear and will start Apocalypse 1, so better to get that head start now. Number 2 on this list is going to be maxing out your resources as much as you can. Getting all your resources to 999,999 will give you a nice little boost when it comes to upgrading your current and new gear while you're progressing through World Slayer. Remember, our average gear level has now been bumped to 75 from 50, so there's going to be a lot of upgrading ahead. Now don't forget, when I mean resources, I also mean shards. A quick note about shards is you will only get the shard value from the gear with the shard symbol next to it. Another tip regarding shards that I don't think a lot of people are aware of is that you can transfer shards from your main character to your alt character. How do you do that? Simple, choose any piece of gear with the shards attribute that you need for your alt. For this example, let's say cooldown reduction. Go to Zahidi and max out all or only the cooldown shard for that piece of gear, put that gear into your stash, go to your alt character, transfer it to your inventory, and dismantle it. The alt character will now get the full shard amount when you dismantle it. This is a great little piece of advice I have for folks that don't have time to grind and farm for shards on each character. You can farm on your main character and transfer it to your alt. Win-win. Another quick note I want to mention here is to also have as many mods unlocked for your characters. This is just going to be a little bit of a quality of life thing when you're swapping and upgrading your gear. You can do the same little trick for mods as you do with shards. Mod a T3 mod on a piece of gear that you don't need, slap it in your stash, transfer it to your alt, dismantle, and boom, you now have that T3 mod. Moving back to resources really quickly because I forgot to mention it earlier is that if you have an abundance of one resource and not another, then vendors are your best friend, more specifically Tiago and Bailey. You can sell excess drop pots at Tiago for scraps and excess titanium for drop pots there as well. You can also sell excess iron at Bailey for scraps as well as leather. Note that you can also buy leather, iron, and titanium at Bailey for scraps as well. So what's the most optimal way to farm these resources then? Well, you have two options. One is just to play expeditions solo or with friends, but make sure you're completing these expeditions in a timely manner. While yes, the timers are removed, you'll get much more resources when you can complete an expedition efficiently. Option two is to cheese Eye of the Storm. Sure, it costs 40k drop pots to go there, but with the spawn manipulation method, you can complete Eye of the Storm in less than 7 minutes solo, in less than 4 minutes duo, in less than 3 minutes trio, and about 5 minutes on a hard double carry with naked level 1 characters. Want to find out how to cheese Eye of the Storm? Check out the video popping up on the top right corner, it'll also be linked in the description down below. Remember, you also get the most loot drops in Eye of the Storm, as well as being able to choose one legendary upon completion. Another fact about Eye of the Storm is, like I mentioned earlier, while it does cost 40,000 drop pots to go there, this is only for the host strat travels to the location. If you have any friends tagging along, they won't have to pay the 40,000 drop pots and can benefit from that sweet, sweet 75,000 drop pots upon completion. You can always cycle out hosts so your friend who's paying to go there can take a break and also benefit from the full 75,000 drop pods. This isn't going to be the most fun method to farm as it is going to get boring after some time, but hey, it saves you time, and time is money. Now you may say, Plato, I watched your Eye of the Storm cheese video, but do you really expect us to believe that you can hard double carry two undergeared level 1 characters in Eye of the Storm, and in 5 minutes nonetheless? To that I say, take a look. I'll have this full carry run at the end of the video if you wanted to take a peek. It uses the methods outlined in my Eye of the Storm cheese video. I also have this build that I'm using in the video outlined in this video description as well. Note that this build is nowhere near optimized and still blasts. Please don't use this build outside of Eye of the Storm as it sucks in any other scenario. And for tip number three, I'm going to go ahead and split this into two categories or two options as they're both beneficial. Option one is for those that have multiple characters maxed out or close to max out resources. Feel free to delete everything in your stash and inventory except for the gear you're going to be using on your character for World Slayer. That's right, to everyone out there hoarding greens and blues, they don't matter anymore. 
With the new Apocalypse gear system, also a video linked down in the description below for this one, all of our old gear will be getting replaced with Apocalypse gear that will drop with a third mod slot. Now as a reminder, this third mod slot cannot be cheesed in any way as they can only drop on Apocalypse gear, no more conveniently crashing your game to try to scam it from Zahidi and Abini. Now, if you don't want to delete all of your extra gear, that's fine too. You can keep them in your stash as well as create mule characters to fill them to the brink with legendary gear. Why legendary gear and not greens, blues, and purples? Because legendary gear gives you the most resources when dismantling. Instead of clearing out your stash space and extra inventory space, you can do the complete opposite and fill them with legendary so you can dismantle them once you run out of all your resources while upgrading during World Slayer. This will give you a nice little top op if you need to upgrade a piece of gear and can't be bothered to farm. The only thing I would be careful if you choose this option is that if your inventory and stash is full, any gear you pick up will be auto dismantled. Maybe even meet in the middle and keep a good amount of your stash empty while filling your mules and characters to the brink with legendaries to dismantle. I personally went with option 1 which was to clear my stash and inventory space except for the gear I'm going to be using to farm War Slayer as I already have 3 characters close to maxed out on resources. My plan is to have additional stash space for all the new sexy apocalypse gears we'll be getting with that third mod slot. Plus it feels really good to see that stash space empty after a year of it being filled with junk. Oh, another quick note, here's hoping PCF finally increases our maximum resource cap from 900,999. If this is the case, it is going to be more beneficial to stock up on those legendaries. Thanks again for everybody who tuned into this video. Hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to check out the rest of my Outriders content that I'll be linking in the description down below. Like I promised earlier, enjoy that gameplay of the double hard carry and Eye of the Storm with those fresh level 1 characters. Until the next one guys, peace.